what is the Fourth Amendment? The Fourth Amendment is the right of the people. It's the right of the people. What does that mean? It's your right. It's my right. It's our right. I'm willing to fight and die for that right. I'm willing to be hated by both the left and the right to fight for my rights. I believe in the American system. I believe in the Constitution. I believe in the Bill of Rights because I've studied them deeply. Now, what does the Fourth Amendment say? It's the right of the people. It starts off by saying it's the right of the people. Have you heard that before? Has anybody ever told you that the Fourth Amendment starts off by saying it is the right of the people? That means it's your right. That means it's my right. So listen, if you are for America, if you're for freedom, if you're for liberty, if you're for the idea that we have a Bill of Rights, that it exists, and we should stick to that Bill of Rights, or at least get to the Bill of Rights standard, then I need you guys to support. I want you to go pick up this poster right now. This poster is available on my website, Delete Laws. You can see it right there, Delete Laws. You can see it right there. Now, it's a digital poster that you buy from me for 20 bucks, and then you print out at home. And today we're gonna to talk about the jurisprudence of Terry versus Ohio. The cases that extend from Terry versus Ohio that completely and utterly ruin our country. Wow, lots of people here today, holy smokes. Thank you guys so much for coming, I really appreciate it. I have been doing this now for a very long time. I have been learning and teaching constitutional law for a very long time. How you have your rights and how you lost your rights. And we're at a tipping point in our country right now. Did you not know that? We are at the tipping point in our country right now where they're gonna reinstitute mandates. And let's talk about that for a minute. In 1820, a mandate begins with the Temperance Society for Prohibition. What happens in 1920? They pass prohibition. Prohibition is passed in 1920. Woodrow Wilson, the executive in charge, he vetoes it. But the Congress, the people we vote for, they override his veto with two thirds of a vote, meaning that they want the mandate. They want the mandate. And then what happens? The very first industrial prison system in the world is created right here in the United States of America. Right here in the United States of America. This is how we have an industrial prison system from a mandate from a mandate. And so then the mandate of Carroll versus the United States creates exigent circumstances where if there's gonna be a loss of life, if the police are in hot pursuit or they need to seize evidence off you, there's now a mandate that they can skip a search warrant and just enter into your life. So listen, I need you guys to learn this stuff. Wow, you guys, so many people here, so many people. Thank you guys so much for coming. I appreciate it. As you know, on the left, some of the leaders of BLM have branded me a racist and my channels are shut down. My channels have been shut down and I'm just getting back on. That's why there's a couple thousand people in here right now because people have been waiting to hear from me and I'm so, so grateful, I'm so grateful. So, and then on the right side, you have bigots and racists and people who believe that I'm anti-American, which is the exact opposite. The exact opposite of my belief system is anti-American. I am 100% for the Bill of Rights. I am for the teachings of natural law of John Locke, of Jean-Jacques Rousseau and Montesquieu. This American flag was draped over my grandfather's coffin because every single member of my family since the Revolutionary War has fought for this country. My great grandfather was gassed in France. Facts. Now, as we go down the line here, each one of these cases on the digital poster, each one of these cases is in my ebook. You can get my ebook and you can get my digital poster on deletelaws.com. Please go there and pick up the digital poster. I need your support. Being targeted by both the left and the right is surreal. It is surreal. You don't understand. There are people who've known me for a very long time who once the mob mentality starts, they begin to falter and fall. I spoke to a woman last night. She said to me, Chili, I feel depressed. I feel, I feel like I'm wandering in the woods. I said, yes, because you went away from the light. You left the light. You know as well as I do that Terry versus Ohio is the linchpin of death. Take a look. We have Terry versus Ohio, then what happens after Terry? It takes off like a rocket. See, it's here. There's Terry versus Ohio, and there's the death system after that. That's where you can be killed by the police because Terry puts officer safety over your right to life, over your right to live. Terry versus Ohio puts officer safety over your rights. And then the jurisprudence of Terry, the starry decisive of Terry, then extends into South Dakota versus Opperman, into Cortez versus the United States, into Illinois versus Gates into Wilson versus Arkansas, into Tennessee versus Garner, into Graham versus Connor, into Wren versus the United States, into Pennsylvania versus Mims. Pennsylvania versus Mims says you gotta get out of the car in the name of officer safety. Who's it safe for? Is it safe for you or is it safe for the cop when you get out of the car? How many people over here are dead because they got out of the car in the name of officer safety? But more than that, it's a modern day lynching system. If you're not killed by the police, your life is ruined. Your life is ruined because look at this prison system take off like a rocket. Why does that happen? Why does that happen? 
that happens because of Terry versus Ohio. This changes the Fourth Amendment standard. What does the Fourth Amendment standard say? Let me use the other poster, it's easier. I don't have to look down. So right here, the Fourth Amendment says, it's, what is the Fourth Amendment? The Fourth Amendment is the right of the people. It's the right of the people. What does that mean? It's your right, it's my right, it's our right. I'm willing to fight and die for that right. I'm willing to be hated by both the left and the right to fight for my rights. I believe in the American system. I believe in the Constitution. I believe in the Bill of Rights because I've studied them deeply. Now, what does the Fourth Amendment say? It's the right of the people. It starts off by saying it's the right of the people. Have you heard that before? Has anybody ever told you that the Fourth Amendment starts off by saying it is the right of the people? That means it's your right. That means it's my right. And then what else does it say? To be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures. That means you have a right to be secure against the government. That means that the Carroll Doctrine of 1925 that says if the police are in hot pursuit of you or they think there's gonna be a loss of life or they need to see evidence, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. You don't could create an exigent circumstance for the government to go around your Bill of Rights. That's why we have a Bill of Rights. A Bill of Rights. You understand that? So. You have the right to be secure in your person, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures, and you have a Bill of Rights that guarantees that. When a mandate is pushed through from 1820 to 1920, and then they push through the Carroll Doctrine, which is based on what? Based on prohibition. It's based on prohibition. Wow, you guys, 2,500 people in the room. Holy smokes. So now, right here, when we create exigent circumstances, the government says we can go around your rights because there's a mandate. Sound familiar? Does it sound like what's going on today? That's what's going on today. So let's keep going on your Fourth Amendment. You have the right to be secure in your Pearson House's papers and effects unless the Carroll Doctrine creates exigent circumstances and says that we can just go around your rights if we think there's gonna be a loss of life or we need to seize evidence or the cops say they're in hot pursuit of you. So now you lose all your rights because of prohibition, because of a mandate. Do you understand what's going on now? And so then we kept forward and it says, and no warrant shall issue but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation. What does that mean? That means that no warrant shall issue but upon probable cause. That means a law has been broken and then supported by oath or affirmation. That's the victim who's claiming that you have hurt them. You see that? You can't be arrested in our country or you're not supposed to be arrested on John Locke's theory of natural law unless you have created a victim. Unless you've created a victim. That, but not the edge of the circumstances clause because that's gonna extend into Terry versus Ohio in 1968. And then we keep going, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the person or things to be seized. Is that what's going on in America? Or are cops just grabbing people off the street and arresting them? Is that what's happening? That is what's happening. Listen, I need your support. I'm getting hammered from the left and the right. This is, this is crap. But listen to me, just so you know, down the line, and I'm not these people, I'm just showing you guys some historical facts here. Did you know that John F. Kennedy's approval rating was less than Nixon's? Did you know that? Lower than Nixon's. Did you know that? Did you know that Malcolm X was hated by both the left and the right? You think he was loved, he was not. He was not, not at all. Because the people who were on the, the black team back then, they didn't want this guy leading. They didn't want him leading at all. And then he went through a bunch of things where he was, where he was peaceful and then violent and then peaceful again. It just depends on who you talk to through history. People who want to change this country and make this country live up to the standards of the Bill of Rights, live up to the constitutional standards, they are often executed. They're executed. And Malcolm X was infiltrated just by a guy with black skin. A guy with black skin was able to infiltrate his group and he was a member of the NYPD. He's right down here. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I took his face off there because he does not belong on this board of history. And then Martin Luther King Jr. is assassinated April 4th of 1968. And then you know what happens? You know what happens on April 5th of 1968? So some riots break out in the country because the leader of the black people has been executed. He's been assassinated by the FBI. They're gonna say it wasn't them, it was them and the CIA. And so what happens on April 5th? There's riots in our country. What happens after that? Lyndon Johnson calls Earl Warren to the White House and they have a meeting. The two branches of government that are not supposed to collude together have a meeting and what do they do on April 5th of 1968? They conjure up Terry versus Ohio. There are tapes from the White House from April 5th of 1968 about the meeting with Lyndon Johnson and Earl Warren. I want to hear those tapes. It's so frustrating to know these things. So now Terry versus Ohio is gonna extend into all these different things where you gotta get out of the car in the officer's safety, where the cops can impound your car, where you have to get out of the car if you're the passenger in a car in Arizona versus Johnson here. And then Florida versus Harris says that if a dog barks, that's the same as probable cause. 
A dog barking at your car is the same as probable cause. You can be arrested for a dog barking at your car. And by the way, I got a friend named Micah Johnson. He's been arrested twice on what? Reasonable suspicion. So the Terry v. Ohio puts officer safety over your civil liberties, but then it allows any cop who's reasonably suspicious of you to arrest you and take you to a dungeon. You think I'm kidding, I'm not. Talk to Micah Johnson. Listen, go by my website, deletelaws.com and pick up my poster. I need you to buy this digital poster. I need support. I, I need support. What's going on is crazy. It's nothing short of crazy. I love this country. I believe in this country. I wanna teach you guys more lessons. I want you guys to get the digital poster. I want you to get the ebook. If you don't have the $20 for either one of them, I will give it to you for free. There is no barrier of entry to fight for your rights, to fight for this country. There's no barrier of entry. Anybody who won't give you information because you don't give them money is a fraud. Anybody who says, oh, you gotta pay for my services if I'm gonna teach you is a fraud. They're full of shit. Everything I have, I will give you absolutely for free. I've given away 500, 600 of these digital posters in the past week. In the past week, I've given away five or 600 of these posters. They're digital. You, you buy them from me, you take it to your local print shop and you print it out. I cannot be shipping posters. I cannot be shipping t-shirts. I can't do it. We have a goal here. We have a mission. Join me now. Join me now. I give you my word. I never stop. I never stop. They will have to kill me before I stop. I will stop when we overturn Terry versus Ohio and I will retire. And then somebody else is gonna have to take the charge. The 10 year old kid watching this today is gonna have to take the charge to make the Supreme Court electable. And I have a very specific plan to make the Supreme Court electable. We break them up into six different districts. Here's our country here. Break those tyrants up. Break those tyrants up into six different districts, okay? And then each district elects nine Supreme Court justices. Every three years, three more are elected. We break up the nine tyrants who have absolute power over us. And as you know, anybody else, anybody else appointed to their job for life? Anybody else? Do you think a government official should be appointed to their job for life? What did John, what did John Jay say in the Federalist Papers, Federalist number three? He says, if we appoint the right men in the right places, that's from Federalist number three on the Federalist Papers. Have you ever heard that before? Did you know that he said, if we appoint the right men in the right places, and he's one of the founding fathers of our country? Did you know that? Welcome to knowledge, welcome to information. They don't want you to know what I'm teaching. They don't want patriots and BLM getting together. The intelligent people, not the mob mentality. I spoke to that girl last night who said, I feel like I'm wandering in the wilderness. Yes, you are. You allowed a mob to paint me bad, and I'm not. I love this country, I'm willing to fight and die for this country. Lots of lessons to come, lots of lessons to come. I'm gonna have to switch my platforms to YouTube. I'm gonna have to switch my platforms to different things because BLM on TikTok is targeting me and getting my account shut down. Wow, almost 3,000 people in the room. Holy smokes. Oh, it's a lot of pressure. Oh, it's a lot of pressure. <sighs> Thank you guys so much for your support. Let me go over my different uh, ways you can get in touch, in touch with me and the way you can support me. You can go to deletelaws.com, pick up my poster, pick up my ebook. They're 20 bucks a piece if you don't have it contact me, I'll send it to you for free. These are my different, my different applications that I use for a cup of coffee. If every person fishes in a cup of coffee, I don't have any problems and I keep going. I'm gonna keep going anyway. I don't give a shit if I'm teaching on the side of the road and there's a bunch of kids standing in a field. I don't care, I don't care. We have to get back to the standard of freedom and liberty in this country and if we don't, your kids and your grandkids will live in concentration camps. This is my heart, this is my passion, this is my soul. I will never, ever stop. I've been doxxed, I've been targeted, I get death threats every day. It's insane what's going on. It's absolutely insane, but I won't stop. Go by my website, show some support, thank you so much. Get the digital poster, get the ebook. I'm gonna go over the deep details of Terry v. Ohio's jurisprudence today. I'm making that video right now. It's gonna be posted next. Thank you very much.